How's it going guys? Today I'm going to be giving you some tips on customizing your Linux kernel. Now this is something that I'm sure that you Gen2 users are very familiar with, but believe it or not, you can actually customize your Linux kernel and then run that instead of the default maintainer one on any Linux distro. Now, it's a good idea to back up that default one that the maintainer gives you because obviously that's the one with whatever settings they put in that's meant to be used for that distribution. But customizing the kernel, I would say it's a really good idea. It's really good for the learning process especially uh, because it makes you familiar with what's actually in the Linux kernel. And you can actually say that you are really familiar with Linux because a lot of people when they say that, they're just talking about Linux distributions in general. Maybe they're talking about just Debian uh, or Ubuntu, one of those distros, but they've never really gone and customized the kernel. And technically that's what Linux really is. Uh, so anyway, for customizing the kernel, you're probably going to use menu config. That's uh, what you see here. So you would run it by, um, you know, typing in the command make menu config. And this just shows you the kernel in a tree-like fashion. So there's these different menus, uh, and then you can go through submenus and then change different options. It's much more convenient than, I think, old config or old def config, where you basically went through line by line and would answer yes or no. Do you want to enable this and, or do you want to build it in as a module? But here, you've got this end curses menu that you can just go through. Um, now, one tip that I will give you, and this kind of goes back to the Gen2 installation video that I made, I think about a week ago, is when you first set up Gen2, when you're using one of these source-based distros or just any distro where they actually encourage you to customize your kernel, you might not want to do it right away until you have uh, a functional system. And obviously functional is gonna mean different things to different people. Uh, but get your internet working, probably get a graphical environment like this working and get a browser working because you can use the browser to try to get some help for fixing your kernel if you run into a problem. So it's a good idea to at least get up and running uh, to that point. But also chances are whenever you install some software, especially if it's something big, like this is for a uh, vert manager, there's going to be things that you have to change in the kernel anyway. And so it tells you right here on the Gen2 wiki page for Vert Manager all of the different kernel settings that you have to enable. So it's probably going to be a lot more convenient for you to go back and forth between an actual page on your computer and then going back to the kernel to customize it versus maybe having to look at your phone and you're looking at the Gen2 wiki that way. Uh, and you're editing the kernel from a TTY. So that's tip number one. Tip number two, uh, and you'll notice when they show you things on the Gen2 Wiki, they kind of give you this tree-like fashion. And usually this is pretty up to date, but sometimes it can be out of date. And that's one thing that can kind of throw you off. Another thing that might throw you off when you're trying to find these individual options in your kernel is if it's not on the Gen2 Wiki, say it's on some other Linux forum, or maybe it's a forum for that particular program, they're probably just going to list the string that you have to enable in your kernel. So it's probably gonna be something um, that looks like this. So where it's like config and then you know blah, 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 coming after it. Well, if you're going through menu config, it doesn't list these configs out, but what you can do to find them a lot easily, uh, a lot easier, is just searching for them with forward slash. So this is the same command that you would use in Vim, and then you can try to find something like, uh, I think ton tap was one that I had to change earlier. Uh, maybe we'll just try ton. Okay, so then it gives you these search results now. And you can go to the area where uh, it references each one because on this one, uh, there's actually a whole lot. And you can sort of figure out what it is just based on looking. So this is something else that you'll also get out of messages from Portage, like whenever you emerge a package, like let's say that I tried to emerge this vert manager and I didn't have these options enabled in my kernel. It's going to give you all these error messages like, hey, this is not configured when it's supposed to. 
So you should have some general idea of what submenu it's under. But anyway, uh, you see how it kind of gives this tree structure and then it gives a number right here. If I just press that number one, then it's automatically going to take me to that area. And I know that under a network core driver, uh, this is uh, what I want and it's already enabled because it is what I wanted for a program that I merged earlier. And pressing escape, by the way, so instead of it bringing you back up to the higher menu, it's going to bring you back to the search result. And uh, like I could do two to get brought to number two, uh, but this is not the option that I was looking for. Okay, so you've gone through and you've changed whatever uh, kernel settings you need to change. So you go ahead and save your kernel. It tells you here to either enter a file name, which is a good idea if you're gonna be working with a bunch of different kernels, but by default, it just gives it the name .config. Okay, so uh, yeah, I'll exit because I don't wanna change anything. So whenever you actually make some changes, and let me um, clear the screen and try to make this bigger switched back to DWM recently. So I'm a little bit rusty on some of the keyboard shortcuts. Um, but anyway, you get this .config file. Here it is inside of your Linux folder. So this contains all of those different changes, right? This is gonna be updated after you saved it. So it's a very good idea to back this up because you can see, look, it's 5,000 lines of different options. You definitely want to back this up, especially once you get a working kernel. And that way, if you do end up changing something, maybe you change a whole bunch of things and then you can't remember what you changed, you can just reload this and then you'll have a working kernel again. Same thing if you're going to be deploying this Gentoo system onto another computer, onto another piece of hardware, uh, maybe it's the same because obviously when you go through and configure your kernel, you're probably going to change some things that limit what hardware it works on. You're probably gonna have it optimized for your hardware and then maybe just exclude all options for other hardware. Uh, but anyway, this will make deploying that same kernel onto uh, some other system much, much easier. One thing I do recommend doing with naming your kernels though, uh, and you don't necessarily have to do this because it is listed right here, but just put out whatever the version string of that kernel is, either in the file name or, you know, if you don't want to, it is inside of the .config, but you do have to take a look at it to see which version it is. Reason for that is whenever you upgrade a kernel, every, you know, version of a Linux kernel that gets released is having new options put into it. And whenever there's a major version bump, like if you're going from say version four to version five, you might not be able to just use that old configuration because a lot of the menus are gonna be changed around. Uh, some of them are gonna be added, some of them are gonna be gone, things are gonna be moved into other sub menus. And so it's just not gonna be able to swap that config over smoothly. So whenever that happens, you're gonna have to kind of start from scratch. But if you have that old config saved, you could still, look in it like this to get the names and then remember you can do that forward search that forward slash to search and just chop off the config underscore at the beginning and then you'll find whatever it is you're looking for like a generic irq probe generic irq show so on and so forth it'll bring you in press the number to go to that sub menu and bam you can tick on that option if you still need it that's it for this video guys have fun customizing your linux kernel like and comment to hack the algorithm. Follow me on Odyssey. Have a great day.